Welcome to the first episode of a new series I'm doing called Made in America. <laughs> in this series, I'll introduce you to some great American-made outdoor products that I've personally used and that I approve of. The first product I'll be reviewing is from a company you've, like, you've likely never even heard of before until now. The company's called Best American Duffel, or Bad Bags for short. Bad makes arguably the best duffel bag you'll ever own. They're tougher than the Red Ox duffel bags, in my opinion, and they're about half the price. So, why do hunters and anglers need duffel bags? Well, when you fly into really remote locations on light aircraft, those small planes don't allow hard-sided luggage. You know, for the exception of maybe a flat rifle case. If you've ever tried to load your gear into that tiny little hole on a Cessna 206, you understand that hard-sided luggage will never fit in there. Many light aircraft won't even allow you to take uh, hardback rolling duffel bags. So if you're flying back into a remote Alaskan fishing lodge for a salmon run, or you're landing on a remote airstrip for a honey camp in Zimbabwe, you know all about the need for a good duffel bag. Duffel bags are also great for keeping gear in the back of a pickup truck. They don't slide around all over the place in the bed of a truck like hard-sided luggage does. Man, that's annoying. And uh, you can also pack a lot of bags like this into a tight space in the bed of a pickup. So these are great for traveling by pickup or car. When I'm on trips where light aircraft isn't involved, you know, just uh, flying big jets with check bags the whole way, you know, I usually take rolling luggage or some hard-sided luggage with me, and I pack those damn things until I hit the maximum weight allow allowable for the airlines I'm flying. But if light aircraft is involved at all, this is my go-to checked bag right here. You know, this is a the Bad Duffel Bag number five. This bag is made out of really tough thousand weight Cordure nylon with a DWR coating that sheds water. And uh, if these straps and handles look like seat belts to you, it's because they are seat belts. <laughs> these straps and handles are rated for a 6,000 pound brake strength. And they're uh, cross-stitched to the bag for strength and durability. This is one tough bag. The inside of the bag has these very functional pockets on both sides that are really large and deep. And uh, these are great because instead of having storage on the outside of the bag, where, you know, you have to use additional TSA locks to lock it up and people might get into it. The additional storage bags are actually in the inside of the main compartment, so you don't really need to lock these. So it's a great design having these large pockets on the inside of the bag. Um, also on the outside of the bag, you'll see these uh, zippered pockets right there on either side. And these are great when... Uh, you want to take the shoulder strap off after you check when you check your baggage in and put the sh you could tuck the shoulder strap away in one of these side pockets right here. You know, you always want to remove your shoulder strap uh, before giving your bag to the baggage handlers because these things have a real bad habit of getting caught in luggage conveyors and you don't want that. You'll also notice that these shoulder straps have uh, no plastic hardware. It's all nickel-plated welded steel. You know, uh, these are never going to break. You know, and of course, and of course, the zippers on this bag are just totally over-engineered. And they're compatible with TSA locks, too, so you can lock them up. And one of the really brilliant things about this bag is there's no end uh, compartments on it. You know how most duffel bags, you look at the Red Ox and others, 
they have a little uh, compartment on the ends of the bags right here. And I don't really like in pack in pockets on uh, any of my bags because it's just an extra thing to lock up, and you know it makes things more problematic. I like that this bag ditched the in bags and put um, additional storage bags on the inside of the bag where they're locked up. That way you only need to uh, just lock up this big compartment. And everything stays inside this big compartment. I'm not really a big fan of a bunch of external pockets on a, uh, on a checked duffel bag. So I'm glad they have that. Also, uh, you'll notice the carry handles right here. You know, this is, of course, seatbelt material rated for 6,000 pounds, and it's got this nice leather uh, snap handle in the middle that's really comfortable to carry. And, of course, uh, on the ends of this bag, it's got uh, carry handles made out of seatbelt material also. So just a very, very well-made bag. Bad also makes these nice inserts for their bags right here. And these are to stiffen up the base of the duffel bag a little bit and make uh, organizing your packing cubes a lot easier. And bags like this were just made for packing cubes. And I mean, packing cubes are the only way to go if you're using a soft-sided duffel. But uh, in addition to packing cubes, I've been using these micro bad bags is kind of packing cubes for heavier items. And uh, you know what, I'll, I'll give you a little review of these and show you what I can put in them. And this bad bag right here can pretty much hold all of my fishing gear in case a hunting trip also turns into a fishing trip, which it often does for me. You can see in here, got a rag. Two fishing reels, line, a set of fishing pliers, a fully stocked tackle box, a bait knife, and some other tools and accessories. And you can see these mini bad bags also have little pouches in here. You know, if you're fly fishing or something, you can keep all of your tippet material and everything in there. It's got a Velcroed pouch right here. And like the bigger bad bags, it also has an internal pouch right there. So this thing is really great. So that's what the fishing gear I put into these mini bad bags. And likewise, with, you know, with these mini ba bags, these little mini duffels. You know, this I keep a lot of shooting accessories in a bag like this. You know, uh, my rain jacket. Get that out of the way. A gun slicker. It's the rifle cover I use in Africa. Maybe I'll do a review on one of those. Um, a buff. Some leg gaiters. A rear bag. So when I'm out uh, verifying the zero on my gun when I show up at honey camp. A Lucy light, basically a solar lantern. A boar snake for my 416 Remington. And a full cleaning kit for both the rifles I'll be taking on safari. A Leatherman tool. Earplugs. And a gun tool. So... You could fit a lot of stuff in these little mini bad bags, and they work great as packing cubes for heavier items or bulk, bulkier items. I also always carry a spare pair of boots with me on hunting trips and a set of wading boots on fishing trips. And I really like these boot bags from Bad as well. I mean, you can see they just fit in there perfectly tight and don't lose shape, and that's the key to packing duffel bags is you want to compartmentalize everything in packing cubes or bags to where it's not loose and moving around and shifting weight everywhere. And you can see these you could fit a 
set of hunting boots in there real easy and it's really secure and convenient. You could put your damp wading boots in here or your muddy hiking boots in here and it won't contaminate everything else in your duffel bag. So I highly recommend a boot bag too. And one of the cool things about these number five bad bags to me is uh, you can actually fit a bunch of fly rods in the tubes in these. So these are like the perfect size duffel for the outdoorsman. So I think it's safe to say that any traveling sportsman is going to need a good duffel bag. And especially those of us who fly on light aircraft frequently, or those of us who pack a lot of gear into the back of our pickup trucks, the duffel bag is probably the best solution for that. And I highly recommend bad bags. These are made by American craftsmen in the state of Washington out of the highest quality materials. And to me, the price is very reasonable for what you get. You'll, I think you'll love the quality and the layout of these bags. So check them out at badbags.com. That's badbags.com. But no matter what you buy, you should try to support the American worker at every opportunity. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Made in America and good hunting.